This is David. Welcome back behind the velvet rope. Let's just get right into it today because we are joined by the one, the only Nicole Miller. Hi. What is going on? Where are you today in the world? Well, I'm in my office today and um, it's kind of a gray day in New York, but um, I don't know. We're busy making um, an outfit for a country Western singer and hopefully she'll wear it to the CMAs. So I'm excited about that. What country Western singer? Uh, Juna of Juna and Joey. It's a brother and sister duo. And nice. they're, she is like so adorable. So they're really fabulous. So it's been an exciting, fun project. Nice. Well, it is a gray day in New York, but I have to tell you, I am literally, this is my second day back in New York. I have been at my Sag Harbor residence for the past five months. So I think of you when That's I'm in like, Sag Harbor. I'm in Sag Harbor too. I know. That's why I'm bringing it up. Because oh. I mean, we have, don't you just love splitting your time between New York and Sag Harbor? Yeah, it's the best. It is well, the best. I'll see you at Bilbo K or Dopo or one of those places. <laughs> those are the good ones. Bilbo K, Dopo, and Tudo. Those, those are my three favorites. Always good, yeah. Well, look, you're in your New York office. That's a far cry from, you know, where you grew up in Texas, Fort Worth. I mean, growing up, was it always fashion for you? Like, did you think you wanted to do anything else with your life? Yeah, I, I, I actually didn't grow up in Texas. I lived there when I was little and we moved to San Francisco and then we moved back to New England. Oh, so wow. all my like school years were pretty much in Massachusetts. Nice. But, um, but so my mother was from Paris um, and she sort of really did not understand American culture too much and <laughs> wasn't very fond of it. So she was always trying to Frenchify the household and everything. And she got me French fashion magazines from Paris. So she always had subscriptions to French magazines. So I grew up with them around me all the time. And that's kind of where it started. I was obsessed. I would just live for that, you know, French Marie Claire coming, you know, <laughs> coming to the house and I would just go over it page after page after page. And uh, yeah, and it was great. I was glad I had that French connection. Also, we grew up speaking French. And uh, so it, it was good to have that, that side. So when was the first time, like in your career, like, you know, so you knew you wanted to pursue this, like, when was the first time where you kind of said, wait, I think I could actually make a living at this? Well, the um, thing is, I was, I mean, I always made my own clothes and I always sewed and everything, but I was always obsessed with models. So I was like, oh, I'm going to be a model, you know? So, and everybody always told me I was going to be tall, right? So, you know, I'm checking my height every day and it's just like, you know, five, two, five, three, five, four. And that, and I'm like, hey, wait a minute. Where's where's the five seven? Where's the five eight? I mean, you didn't have to be five ten in that those days. I could have made it to five five seven. But anyway, and I go, oh, I got to switch gears. I've got to do something else. So anyway, still fashion, love of clothes. I go, okay, can't be a model. I'll be a designer. So <laughs> I think I decided decided that when I was about you know fifteen. Wow. And I just I was always just very focused. That was what I was going to do. And then you had your first shop on Madison in the mid eighties, you know, talking about New York city, yes. you know, like how much does like, like does New York, you know, like did that influence you in your early designs? Like, does it influence, you now? like how much does the city influence what you do? Well, I mean, I have a lot of influences and I have to say some of my collections have been completely New York city inspired, but I've been inspired by, you know, other cultures and <clears throat> old movies and, and vintage clothes and, art. Uh, so there's, um, I mean, furniture, architecture, a lot of different things. So I, I, I get inspiration from everywhere, but I feel like being in New York, you're in the hub and there's so much energy and activity. And, you know, we have theater here and, you know, obviously, you know, clubs and concerts and all kinds of things. So I feel like I'm always very energized by the city. Very energized. Is there, I mean, you've done so much in your career. Is there like, you know, a one, to, you know, one or two highs where you're just like, wow, you know, like a collection you're really proud of or just something that sticks out in your mind where you're like, this one was just, you know, like a difficult collection, but then we released it and you're like, wow, this is so great or just a high. Well, you know, I always look to my first fashion show because I didn't start having fashion shows until we'd been in business. Let's see, we opened in 82. 
And my first fashion show was in 1990. So we were in business like eight years before we had a fashion show. And then the first year I had a fashion show, I had Linda Evangelista, I had Christy Turlington, I had, you know, Naomi Campbell, I had um, Yasmin Laban and Gail Elliott and Veronica Webb. I had all these, like, I had all the superstars in my show. So that show was killer. It was amazing. And I always loved that collection. And what's crazy is people still borrow from that collection to this day. People are always borrowing those clothes. That's not a bad way to start for your first show with like Linda Evangelista <laughs> and Naomi and all of the above. No, it was great. And then, um, you know, then the next season, I was anticipating getting all those girls again. And I could have, except my show was on the same day as Anne Klein that year. And they booked the models for the entire day. And so they wouldn't let anybody else put them in their shows that day. And had I known that, I would have just booked a different day. So, but I did keep getting those girls. I mean, Naomi was in a lot of my shows and Christy was a lot of my shows. And I, I think Linda was only in a couple, but most of those girls were in, in um, a lot of my shows for years. Is that really a tactic that designers do? Like, you know, where it's like, okay, you're booked for the whole day. so like, you can't do it. Oh, not shows. anymore. No, no, nobody does that anymore. That's a, that was a very old school way of doing things. Yeah, it was, it was, that was like an old fashioned idea. So I don't think anybody does that anymore, but they do sometimes have ridiculous call times where they'll make the model get there like four hours before the show. And you really don't need four hours for hair and makeup. I was going to say booking for the whole day is something I've never heard of, but then again, maybe I just don't know about it. Yeah, no, it's, that was an old school idea. And I, I think like some of the major companies would just, you know, book them for the whole day. I hope they paid them for the whole day too. <laughs> I would hope so. Right. I mean, what about like, do you have any like lows in your career or just like a collection that, you know, didn't work out kind of like the opposite, like the collection that you just kind of regretted, or are you someone that just doesn't really have regrets in life or in business? Well, no, I mean, like the biggest problem I've always had is that, um, we would buy too much fabric and I say we, cause it was, you know, my company, but it was not anything that I was part of. But if we needed like 1,000 yards of fabric, somebody would buy 3,000 yards of fabric. Now, I don't know if somebody was getting paid off on the back end or not, but what would happen, even if collection sold well, I'd end up with this extra fabric. So, you know, I'm trying to reinvent the fabric, you know, I'm pleating it, I'm tucking it. I'm, and actually kind of made me more creative, <laughs> you know, having like this excess of inventory. So, I mean, that's kind of was maybe a big low point once when I was sitting with you know, thousands of yards of, of prints that everybody had already seen and nobody wanted to see them again. So I pleaded them all up. And, you know, I, I actually invented this two-piece outfit and put it with a chunky little sweater. And we 